Good afternoon, this is Lynn Jeans from Jason's Travel Media. I'd like to welcome you all to the fourth in our series of educational seminars for tourism operators. Today we'll be talking to you about the role of video in your properties marketing. And we have two special guests with us, Laura Ortiz, who is a marketing specialist and has worked with Jason's on a number of projects over the last couple of years, and James Haken, who is Chief Executive from Destination Content. And now I'll pass on to James. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, James? Hi, yeah. Thanks a lot, Lynn. It's really great to, for you guys to invite me to come and be part of this webinar. It's, uh, I suppose, yeah, it was really great. Uh, and I, I think I'll start off by talking a little bit about my background for those people listening. Uh, I've actually been here in New Zealand for nearly three years. Uh, before coming to New Zealand, I worked, I actually grew up in hospitality and tourism, having my parents own a number of tourism related businesses. And I've always been a bit of a tech head and really enjoyed anything around uh, the online environment, having, I think, got behind a computer at probably about five or six years old, with my dad being very similar minded. Uh, in terms of my career progression, I started to actually work after I finished my college and education by working at a hotel in Scotland called Glen Eagles. Uh, moved on from there to do some time on Tresco Estate, which is a private island off the southwest of the UK, and also spent some time at a property called Clowns Estate. I suppose until, uh, until coming through to work for TUI Travel Group, which is Europe's largest travel group, where I was involved in overseas operations, my background had always been in accommodation and very much high-end accommodation. Having just over a year working for TUI in this overseas operations role in Spain, I moved back to Glen Eagles again, and that's where I really started to focus a bit more on the online environment in creating a very uh, robust owner's area for property owners at Glen Eagles, which uh, we then led on to development of websites and various other bits. I decided to move to New Zealand in November 2009. Um, yeah, so two and a half, three years now, I think it is, and came to open St. Clair Beach Resort, which is now Hotel St. Clair in Dunedin. It was a really kind of interesting move for me because I went from a hotel with 300 rooms and, that, and 100 properties additional to that uh, to a 26-bedroom hotel in Dunedin. Uh, so it was a very big challenge, but again, my role was very sales and marketing focused even within their general management position. And we did a lot in terms of the online environment for the hotel and ended up actually getting around 60 to 70 percent of our bookings directly on, a, on the hotel website, which in terms of accommodation is quite significant for New Zealand. So I think that really led me on to my next step, which has been doing advisory work for various hotels, motels and lodges. And then late last year, I decided to start destination content I suppose that's what has brought me here through our work with Jason today. So destination content was actually uh, an idea that came, I came up with when speaking in San Francisco last year at the e-tourism conference there. <clears throat> and I really re and I've started to realize that uh, although I'd always valued content and in the web development and the online development and marketing I'd done with tourism businesses, it wasn't until this conference that it really struck me as to how, whilst for the last couple of years before that, I might have been talking about how important Facebook or how important a website is for a business, I started to realize that these are just platforms, and these are ways that we can get our message to people, but it's actually our message, it's that content that's the most important aspect. And it led me on to thinking about where we're at in New Zealand in terms of access to content and how, uh, how particularly smaller tourism businesses, because these were the people that I was spending a lot of time with lodges, motels, some of them only three, four, five rooms, how these people can access content and create content in an affordable way, because I'm aware that most tourism businesses in New Zealand don't have massive tourism budget, uh, sorry, marketing budgets. And that really got me onto looking at video particularly, because I've, I saw some really great benefit of using video at St. Clair Beach Resort, particularly around maintaining people on, uh, maintaining people's length of 
visit to our site and also really helping people to prepare for their stay and see why they should stay at the hotel. So I came back and spoke to a good friend of mine, Clive Copeman, who had previously worked at Natural History New Zealand and on projects for Animal Planet and Discovery. And he decided to team up with me. And our real push was to come away with the concept of creating tourism videos that were affordable for smaller businesses, which took it from a price point of many of the people we spoke to were looking at around five to $6,000. And we wanted to try and pitch it between two and three thousand dollars, and make the process very, very easy. And I think that's where I really wanted to end a little bit about me here. Is one of the things, well, the three things that are really important to me, is no matter what I do, in terms of tourism marketing and marketing for hotels, motels, and properties, I think it's got to be easy. It's got to get results, and it's got to work around what people already do. It can't just be something completely foreign. That's what I really stand for and what we really try to bring to what we do at Destination Content. Perfect. Thanks, James. And so I suppose that leads us on to, to the rest of the webinar. Um, Lara, I'll, I'll pass you on here. Hi, everybody. Um, nice to talk to you again. I'm glad to be back for our fourth academy. And I'm looking forward to being able to discuss this very interesting and um, quickly growing topic. Thanks. Here you go, James. That's great. So I suppose where I really wanted to start in terms of the presentation was where does video sit in the world right now? Let's give a bit of a, a backstory to where we're at. And I think one of the things I found really interesting was last week when I was digging around for some statistics for this is that I was shocked to find that I had to realize that YouTube had only been around for just around five years now. And actually, I look in terms of my use of video online and lots of my friends and family's use of video online, and it's actually really difficult to remember a time before video online. But funnily enough, Clive was sitting next to me saying, well, actually, having worked in that realm before the likes of YouTube, it really was a difficult, difficult position trying to put video online. And there certainly wasn't the ability to be able to share video online easily. And that's what I think YouTube really brought, brought to the web and has really made video quite accessible. I think this is, if you look at the statistic on screen there, 4 billion YouTube views per day. I think it really does kind of suggest where we're up to. And some other statistics that I found as well show that it's between 80 and 90% of all web traffic within the next two to three years is likely to come from streaming video. So it really does show how important it is to the web altogether. I think what's really interesting when you go on to the next slide as well is that you've, the average internet user spends 21 hours per month watching online video. When I first read this, I kind of sat back and went, mm, no, I don't think I spend that much time watching video online. And uh, it wasn't until I started trying to record, this was probably just prior to us starting destination content seven or eight months ago, when I was in the research stage was recording how much time I spent online and suddenly you actually re I realized that I was spending a considerable amount more than that online and it's actually very difficult to you often perceive that you're not but when you think back very quickly to any of your travel planning or looking at products online and all the things that you do usually online watching video comes into that so so very regularly and I think that that's one of the things that we have to realize as people that are trying to sell something online, because ultimately that is what we're doing. We're trying to sell a product. It may be an intangible product, but selling rooms online, we need to realize that these people are looking for information, and video is a really important player there. When you then consider that 71% of global internet users will watch online video in 2012, I think it really just reinforces again that message, and then 140 views for every person on earth on YouTube alone and when you look at some of these uh, when you look at some of the other channels in terms of Facebook uh, you've had uh, some of the older channels like myspace and other uh, social media channels that have huge amounts of views as well it really does really just I suppose cement what I wanted to get in this section of the slides is really just setting the scene in terms of online video 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty impressive there. I, I, I actually, one of the things that um, we wanted to do today, because we were actually very impressed when we saw those numbers as well, we went, is that really true? Gosh. So now I'm going to have to actually do, my, do a little experiment myself and start tracking what I've been watching, because I bet that I'm probably like you and don't even realize it. So we thought it would be nice to um, do a little poll today of the people who are attending and just see how many people in our set of accommodation owners are watching video online. Helen, do you um, have that poll set up? Hello? Sorry, just, <laughs> just trying to get it to launch. Sorry, just a moment. Oh, it's okay. So, 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 James, what were you, what were you saying there? And we can just kind of continue to talk about that. And um, as soon as Helen's got it, it should pop up on the screen in front of everybody, and we can have our audience let us know whether they've been watching video about products and services. And that's really the key to me. Is is you know, some people think like I thought. Oh, I watch TV shows, but I don't really think I watch that much about products and services. But I've started paying attention since putting this slideshow together with you, and. Um, there's much that you watch that you don't realize you're watching. I think that was one of that that has been the, the big surprise to me, and particularly ever since we've started destination content. Obviously, my my head's been a lot more in the online video space, so I lot watch a lot more video anyway. And I will go through people's websites, and I'm really really keen to see how many views they've had on their YouTube videos. And one of the things that I find most interesting is how sometimes I can be on the smallest properties website in the middle of nowhere in New Zealand and have a look at the views in terms of their video on YouTube and they've mm -hmm. had 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 plus views and you just consider, wow. I, I, it really just makes me kind of pull back and, get, and realize that I think we've made the right decision in terms of <laughs> our business but also it really, it, I, I feel very, very, uh, I suppose, I feel that when I am out and encouraging people to look at our services and just look at video actually because to me we have to promote and sell the idea of video before we promote and sell our own services. I mean I can stand by the fact that we've got some really great statistics out there to be able to show, yeah. show that people are watching this. Yeah. Helen, should we skip over the poll? Are we, are we having a technical difficulty? Sorry, we did have a bit of a technical difficulty, but just <laughs> let me try and launch that for you. I think maybe I'll, I'll kind of just talk about some of the stuff on the next slide very quickly, okay. because it's a really interesting one, is that one of the things that people very often come back to me and my team particularly when we talk about video is going, oh, well, actually our demographic's not not watching video. Our demographic mm -hmm. isn't online and our demographic isn't using Facebook and isn't using YouTube and so on. And I think that I just wanted to drop in a couple of points. Is that the biggest growing demographic in terms of age on Facebook right now is 55 to 65 year old females. And in terms of the audience today, I'm very, very sure that many of, uh, that this really does start to, uh, start to hit your particular demographic in terms of motels and hotels. I mean, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the group that we know have got uh, affluent and have got disposable incomes. And I mm -hmm. think when you look at video, the slide that you've just put on screen there is actually talking about increasing in video viewership this year and over the past few years. And again, you look at that 45 to 54, 55 to 64, 65 plus range there is a significant increase in the amount of people looking, in terms mm -hmm. of percentages, looking mm -hmm. at video online. So I think that I really just kind of wanted to put that point out there as to say, just because, uh, just because it's always been very historic that young people are people that are looking online, and young people are people looking at videos and using Facebook, well, actually that's just not the case anymore. More mm -hmm. and more people are turning online, both for, uh, their own bookings, uh, to actually make bookings and to look at and to also research their travel. Yeah, I, I do some work with um, destination marketing organizations and um, 
one of the things that I found being part of the organization that I've been working with is that we've got research from all over the world and the sites that have the video snippets get a lot more time on site and it's a really fast way for you to be able to kind of deliver high level information and it sparks interest in digging deeper in other parts of the site that they may not have been willing to read and get to without having been alerted to the fact that it existed. And the more time on site that you can create, the more engagement you're seeing and the likelier it is that someone's either going to remember you and come back or go ahead and book because you've eliminated their doubts. So um, yeah, all the numbers that we've seen is uh, when you add more content equals more engagement if it's the right content and more engagement equals more bottom line basically. I think that's what we really saw at St. Clair Beach Resort as a, as a case study, I suppose I know so very well, is that we went from having a six-page static site to having over 40 pages on our site, huge amounts of video, lots of photography, lots of recipes, blog posts, and so on and so forth. And we went from an average, uh, an average length of stay of under a minute to well over seven minutes in the end wow. in terms of the length of time people stayed on our site. And I think you look at that, and one of the things that struck me was I was actually watching a video a couple of days ago, in fact, where it was talking about how people book hotels and motels, and it was kindly shared on the Motella blog, which is something I'd encourage people to look at in New Zealand, particularly those in the accommodation sector. And one of the things they talked about there was that 10 minutes is the time that the average time that people will spend on a website prior to booking their accommodation. So once they've selected the accommodation they're looking for, they'll move on to the website they're going to book on and spend 10 minutes looking through the information. And I suppose, to me, that really stands out as being reasserting the fact that they've made the right decision before they inevitably press that book button, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is also mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where so in terms of if you... Are you speaking about just if they choose to book somewhere, they actually visit that website for 10 minutes. Because if, if that's the case, then, you know, some of the research that we have is actually that people visit, I think, between 10 and 12 sites before they ever decide to book. So it's like they go really, really wide, and then they pick, you know, they isolate, okay, these are the ones that I want, and then they go and they discover as much as they possibly can about those places, and then sometimes they book on a site, sometimes they book at an OTA, sometimes they book at a media site like Jason's, and then you know it, it goes on from there. But um, it's, it's actually quite incredible, the, the, one, the volume, and also at the decision-making point, the depth that people look for in terms of information to feel sure before making that decision online. And also the type think... of travel as well, the, the fact that um, it's not just leisure travelers, but also the next slide that you've got there, Lara, about business travelers, it's kind of interesting to see that it doesn't really matter what type of traveler you are, you're still going to be looking for that video. Yeah, and all the data out there these days is saying it's, the, the look to book window has gotten much wider. So it, people are taking a lot longer between discovering the consideration phase is longer and then they're booking closer to the time of travel. So uh, the more you content you've got there to keep them there, the more likely your chances are of, of actually capturing them as a customer. And I think that that's where video plays a really important part is that uh, whilst you can have lots and lots of text on a screen, we know, and I've got stats further on to show that, it, that people are m much more likely to want to watch video than read read masses of text is that actually if you've got a 60 second, 90 second, two minute video, well that's a significant chunk of that information that they're looking for and that time that they're wanting to plan. And I think that in terms of what you can get over in that time period as well, it's a very economical way of uh, utilizing that, that person's time that they're going to be spending on your site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I suppose to okay, turn back so over those last couple of slides, if people didn't see them, it's 67% of leisure travelers are watching video in their planning and 68% of business travelers. So again, yep, it's really important all around. And I think that, um, yeah, as we've already said, we certainly all watch video. Which cool. Does okay, so let's, let's move into the, the why. I mean, the, the obvious thing is that 
if people are of travelers that are watching video, um, they're thinking about a trip or they're trying to choose a destination. So if you capture them while they're looking and they're at that high level and they haven't committed yet, that's the best time to get them because you have an opportunity of getting them to you faster. Um, next on that, this is an interesting one. Why use video? A video is actually really good for SEO. What is your, do you have any experience in this, um, James, in terms of uh, St. Clair? Yeah, with St. Clair, we found that uh, we were finding it very, very difficult to rank in, an optim from, in search engines uh, with our original website very much because Dunedin as a destination is uh, very top heavy in terms of larger brands. So the likes of the Core, Millennium and so on have got lots of properties here. And in terms of ranking under the term Hotel Dunedin or Accommodation Dunedin and so on, we were finding it, finding it very, very difficult. And that was partly why we then look, turned, to, turned to looking at content and making our website more content rich. Um, we certainly, in terms of our videos, we certainly would regularly appear on the front page of Google. And I think that really works into some of the information we've got here that with YouTube being the second largest search engine in the world, I suppose aside from Google, there's lots of people that will look on YouTube and search on YouTube before they'll search on Google. And interestingly, mm -hmm. I was actually speaking to someone in terms of accessible accessible tourism a few weeks ago who said that certain people with certain disabilities, they're very much looking for visual, uh, visual aids and will use YouTube as their main search engine. Mm -hmm. And I think that really stood out to me as well as in terms of become, uh, embracing uh, accessibility to people trying to book our business. Video is quite a, quite a positive tool there as well. Wow, that's interesting. So I think that bears a little bit of explaining. Um, you know, how do you get to the top of Google just because you have a video? Well, we did our last session on SEO and anybody who was um, part of the search engine optimization academy might recall this, but if you haven't, um, Basically, Google has an algorithm that they use to rank um, and decide whether a site is relevant to a set of search terms or not. And one of the things that they've been doing in recent years is modifying that algorithm more and more and more with a bias toward one content, especially photos and video, and two, freshness, so new content. And because there isn't a sort of huge saturation of video out there in the accommodation market at this time, the sites that do have that extra layer of photos and video content are getting extra credit and they have a better chance of ranking at the top, especially since the advent of what's called blended search. What blended search is, is when you land on Google sometimes you'll see all your search results, but you might have a few in the middle that have map points and addresses and they link to Google Maps or maybe there are a little line of photos across the top on a certain page. That's blended search and what it is is it's Google is pulling together its image search, its video search, its map search and its usual normal text search results all together on one page. And for areas that have high competition, you have a higher chance of Google deciding that they want to have a blended search result page. And if you have video, then you've got a competitive edge. And I think what's really interesting to add to that is a lot of people uh, don't realize that YouTube is owned by Google. And in terms of optimization of video, having your video on YouTube uh, means that in terms of that blended delivery of search, that uh, it's actually now the majority of searches will appear with video of some kind on the front page and that will be drawn on most occasions directly from YouTube and that's, mm -hmm. I think when you combine all of that together that's where the statistic of being 53 times more likely to appear on a front page Google search comes from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the number is, um, I saw a certain number yesterday, 58% of Google searches end up on a blended search page these days and then that would make you 50, and then when you're competing in that level, then you are 53 times more likely to appear in the front page search because of the density of video that's out there right now. It's not that dense. So then the last point, why use video? Um, 
engagement. This is this is huge, uh, especially when you're talking about you know seven minutes before somebody will actually, or ten minutes, did you say, before somebody is actually ready to book. They spend ten minutes on your site. If you can keep them engaged longer, you're closer to getting to the end because you know that they've decided to stay. Huh? Yeah, that's right. And I think that in terms of, uh, whilst I do understand and I do promote that SEO is a very important part of uh, your choice in buying a video, to me I really do push that it's about this conversion, converting people who are on your website. Uh, and I think that that's from, from my experience looking at lots of accommodation providers' websites is that they often don't have problems in bringing people to the site in the first place. They get a good flow of traffic through the site. But it's actually about converting them and making them, uh, yeah, helping people to choose their property over someone else. And I think that when you look at look at those figures, around 60% of people surveys are more likely to watch a video than read text on a page. I think it's about making life as easy as possible for someone to stay on your site and to deliver information as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible mm -hmm. to convert that booking. Sure. And I think this applies not only to your own site, but also to any other site where you're doing marketing. I mean, if you have a YouTube landing page and you have video, people, if you can engage them there, they're likely to go find you somewhere and book with you. If you have it on a Facebook page, same thing. If you have it on a media site like Jason's, if you have it on TripAdvisor, all of these places where people find properties, if they can be engaged at that top level, um, you know, the more content you've got there to do that, the better, the more chance that they will choose you and book however they generally prefer to book. Completely. I think that really float, pulls us on to the next slide that we talked about earlier on today, actually, before this, in terms of where, mar where the video fits in their overall marketing plan. I think with mm -hmm. anything you're doing in your marketing, the, as I said at the very beginning, I think it's got to fit in with what you're already doing. There's, there's no point if you haven't got a website, for instance, well, video is probably not your best first option. If you've not got the, the good traffic coming to your site, well, actually, uh, you need to be looking at a complete marketing plan for your website and you need to, uh, for your whole marketing, sorry, and you really need to make sure that you know very clearly where video can fit. And that's where anyone that sells you a video or can produce you a video needs to be able to be very clear in helping you to decide where that fits and why you're looking at video. And I think that's sure. where Lara put together this really great slide that I think really helps to define that. So not hopefully I'll be able to pinch and use in the future. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, what we've been getting at with this entire series, and, and really just it is a best practice in general for any business that's out there trying to make money and survive. Um, you know, you have to have an idea of where you're trying to go. You have to know who your audience is. You have to know, you know, what you're trying to achieve. And once you know that, you create a plan to get there. And it's not about throwing, you know, all the effort into, you know, one small element, but actually creating a, almost a symphony of, of channels that work together to create a consistent experience for people who are interested in you. And if you achieve that, and if what you're offering matches what your customers are looking for, that's where you, know, you see the result. And so, you know, start first with the website. You have to have a website. And then from there, figure out how to get people to go to it. And, and that's what all of these sort of boxes standing around are. And video can fit into any of them. One of the things I was reading about the other day, actually, I got I get a newsletter that was talking about um, email programs and um, email. If you have a customer contact program where you're contacting um, past customers, email receives, it, I think, more than duplicates the click-through rate on uh, email marketing. So, um, e and it isn't actually embedded. It just is, a, is an image that says, "This is watch the video of," and the click-through rate goes through the roof because people are interested in watching videos these days. That's what. It, although, uh, obviously, we at Destination Content aren't a tourism property. We actually found that in terms of our own marketing as well. Is as soon as we put a video on one of our uh, our e-newsletters, mm -hmm. the, the click-through rate goes through the roof. And I think that yeah. it's it's a really positive thing and lots mm -hmm. of these sites whether it be MailChimp or eye contact and so 
so on, they all have that ability to be able to embed video uh, mm -hmm. in the way that you said that it actually pulls pulls a, a thumbnail up into the into the site. On that point as well, I thought I'd maybe pop out there something that we found works really well and maybe something that people want to note down is that when if and when, let's hope it's when you do decide to get a video and you put it on your site and on other sites, by using the word short video, it actually really also helps to increase the amount of people mm. that are willing to click the video. Because I think lots of people are, are so used now to seeing videos that are much too long, three, four, five minutes, and are put off by clicking the video in that respect, that by making sure people realize it's a short video, if they've got a short time frame and they feel that they want to maximize the time they're spending, you're really helping to highlight that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I haven't heard that the polls are on back online yet, so we may skip our next poll question. Um, I think we've, we've or are got they the good? first poll ready. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so the audience, uh, to the audience, you can vote in this poll using your mouse if you just click on the answer that you want. The anticipation. I know, and the sad thing is that as the presenter, you actually can't see what everybody is doing. So I'll need you guys to read me the answers. Yeah, I can, I can see here. <laughs> they were just so this is the one on. Have you watched video on a, about a product or service in the last month? And um, do you currently use video in any of your marketing? Okay, that's the one that we're on. Okay. So we're nearly at the stage where everyone's. Any more for any more? Going once, going twice? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll close the poll off now. Okay, and so we'll we've shared the results with you. Then do you want to read those off? Yeah, so that's 80% um, 80, 80 of people saying they're not um, using video right now. 13% saying yes, and in more than one marketing channel. 7% are saying yes, but, but on, not on my own website. And another 7% saying yes, um, on my website. Okay. Interesting. So if you guys have those videos, um, and you own them, and they're on your website, you can think about some of those items from the last slide and see if there's any way that you can leverage those in your other media spaces. Yeah, and if you I think if one of the, one of the, one of the things that that really mirrors as well is one of the things that I've come across more and more is that lots of people have had videos done, but actually to haven't put them on their own website. And I think again, as we've already discussed, if you've got a video done, it's really important to make sure you put it on your own website. And in lots of ways, I think a lot of people think that this, it's technically very difficult, but it's actually very, very easy for your web designer or web programmer to do it. Or if you are using a content management system that you can do yourself, it's a very, very simple process. And it's something that if you have got a video and you're not sure how to do it, I'd certainly have to uh, let you contact me afterwards, and I'll we'll be happy to pop that, help you pop that on your own website. As a yeah, just as a gesture, because I think it's something that's really important. That's really and certainly, great. you can pop videos onto onto your Jason's listing as well by just emailing listings at jasons dot com um, with your information, and we'll get we'll get back in contact with you. We can do that for you as well. Great. Cool. So now that we've decided that we definitely um, we want video, that video can be valuable for us, and um, we're ready to go forward, the question is, what do we put in the video? So I thought we would do a little bit of um, an exploration on just some inspirational ideas about the kinds of content that are engaging for people in video. Uh, James, I know you guys do a few of these, so if you could just kind of add a little bit of spice from your own personal experience, that would be great. Of course, yeah. I think that... We all know that uh, TripAdvisor, and I know that you guys have done one of your one of your webinars on TripAdvisor and online reviews before. We know that people are looking for reviews from other people online, and that it's a very trusted source. And I think that when you turn this into uh, testimonials that 
are from people who have stayed in your property. And when we do this, we're really, really careful to say to people, actually, look, we don't want you calling your friends around the corner and asking them to come around to record a video. Let's actually get people's candid responses to what they've enjoyed about your property, what they've enjoyed when staying uh, at your property, but about your destination, about local restaurants, all that information, which is when we're traveling, that's what we're looking for, uh, is mm -hmm. all, the, all of that really engaging information. And I think that that's where testimonials on video can just be very, very powerful. I don't know if anyone has seen, uh, if you watch TV, I think it's TV and NZ, there's actually a Jersey Boys advert on the TV right now on about uh, yeah, Jersey Boys in Auckland. And one of the things they were very, I think, is really powerful. Is they've done this testimonial style where the first half of the advert is a really great, uh, I think, probably five to ten seconds about Jersey Boys. It gives you a little bit of the performance. And then on one of the opening nights, they had a camera crew there and got people's candid responses as they were coming out. And I watch that, and I, when I look at that on television, I look and think, wow, honestly, that's one of the ones that I've seen Jersey Boys, and I love it. But aside from that, it's actually <laughs> one of the adverts that makes me want to go and watch Jersey Boys again, because mm. it really does stand out. Yeah. Cool. The other one um, that we talked about was um, visitor generated, and I thought that was quite an interesting thing because you know the big thing now you just you have anyone and everyone is generating these YouTube videos, especially the younger generation, and um, it's it's something that you know user generated crowdsource is kind of a a buzzword that you hear a lot, and I think. Um, you know, it's an interesting idea to explore. I know that um, James, your company is exploring how to how to do these at, at this time, and I would love to hear just you know what your experience has been and, and um, what has your success been with it, and how you go about make, making it happen. What's really interesting with this is actually, as an example, when I was at St. Clair Beach Resort, we had a couple of people who prior had previously stayed at the hotel who would actually flicked us an email with a link to a YouTube clip that they'd actually done themselves. And I think that's really cool, and that happens more and more. For those of you that uh, follow various people on Twitter or like companies on Facebook, I'd uh, also suggest that you have a look on the Juicy, uh, Juicy Rentals Facebook page and so on. Uh, just as an example of the amount of people that are willing to send through visitor-generated videos, they certainly get mm. a good amount, and it's a good company to look at in that respect. But one of the things that we found is that's, I would say that that's probably not too common in terms of accommodation. Um, and we, I really wanted to look at how we could make it affordable to prompt people to do that. And one of the things that we've done is we've gone out and bought a lot of equipment around easy to use equipment and one of the things that we we decided to do was put an option there that we'll spend 10 or 15 minutes in the morning when people are having breakfast in your property asking people if they'd be re if they'd be interested in capturing their own day or experience of your their day and their time in your your property on camera and we spend a little bit of time teaching them how to get the best results so we don't come back with uh, old family movie style shaky cam, we do get something that's usable and one of our videographers makes sure that they're very clear on how much how much to be shooting and that we don't get reels and reels of footage because it's very difficult when it comes back at the end. But we've actually done a couple of these now and the results have been really good. I think it's the, the results are very, very honest uh, and they're very powerful in the fact that it's not something that's been designed to promote. It's actually about people's experience. And once we put that through our editing suite, uh, one of our editors works their magic on it, and we've turned what is raw footage and, uh, from these guys from just pretty normal cameras that we've bought into something that works really well. And I think that by helping to prompt that movement, it's a really great option uh, because, yeah. it, it, again, much more than a professionally produced video, it does help people to realize what's available for, through the eyes of the person, of potentially themselves when they book your property. It sounds like the kind of thing that would be really, really powerful for um, places that have like a, a summertime regular, you know, group of families that show up or, you know, some of these um, either beach related or someone who's got activities on site or even um, a holiday park or campground because so much of what happens would happen on property. 
that it would really generate a great sort of, um, sorry, that was my phone, sorry people. Um, yeah, it would, it would just generate a great feeling around what it really is like to be there. The campground one is actually a really interesting one because that's where we did our first trial. We, I actually headed to down with my business partner Clive to Wanaka and they were in a campground in Wanaka. So we headed down overnight, gave his daughter, in fact, who's what, eight years old, I think, uh, a camera and said, hey, look, we really want you to do this. Here's how to keep it still. Here's what to do. And she shot over a day a nice amount of footage that we ended up able, were able to produce a really, really nice, nice video for as a promoter of the campground. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Um, this one's a little bit more tra traditional. This is sort of your documentary style um, walk around the property. And it, it's generally these are about 90 seconds or so, aren't they? Um, is that the recommended time? I know you said short earlier. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's why we work on a 90-second point, and we felt, when we looked at it, we said, after, if it goes beyond 90 seconds, we think it's actually a little bit too long, uh, and we feel that it, it's really a case that it could, be, it could be pulled back, and it's not maybe concise enough. And the way that we've taken this is, in terms of that documentary feel, we've really tried to make sure that we're, rather than a, a voiceover necessarily, we're trying to get people within the business who are passionate mm -hmm. about the business talking themselves about what they do and how the business can uh, how the business can stand out and what it is that people can expect when they come to that accommodation and yeah. we get we've had some really great responses yeah i think the key the key is definitely that idea of you know what do we have that we can that we can share with people that is unique and different and that would make people want to come here and that's what you make it about you know you don't sit down in front of the camera and say, hi, this is, this is our lobby, this is our room, this is how it is. But you actually put in some energy and, and show them your personality and show them, you know, if you do some unique special dessert or, or breakfast thing or, you know, if there's something cool around the corner that you can walk to, maybe it's a sandwich shop, you know, share those things and, and, and those documentary type videos can be very engaging. And it makes it so much more real than just the words that sometimes you see when people are talking about their properties. Mm -hmm. It's that real sort of real life, this is how it is when you'll get here and this is how it will be when you stay. Yeah. I think that's what's really interesting is one of the first things we say to people, we, we really, when we sit down and interview people is, look, we don't want to hear your marketing jargon as such. We don't want to hear the things that you, the, particularly the words that you feel best describe your property, we actually want you to say it as you would normally say it. It needs to be candid whilst we work really hard to make sure that the key selling features and all of the key points are included in the video. A lot of that can be done visually. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. done with floral, floral words. It's mm -hmm. uh, something that can be done through passion and the voice much more than it is about uh, over-the-top marketing jargon particularly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't want to dwell on this too long because I'm conscious that we're short on time, but I did want to just touch on the, uh, the co-op or the destination sponsored video. This, this concept is, is the idea that we, we know that video as a step in can be quite costly, even at two to $3,000 if you're a small property and you don't have a large marketing budget. And so we were trying to explore ways that would work for people to be able to get into video and still have the advantage of full motion um, without having to splash out entirely for the first time on their own. And one of the things that we've talked about is actually collaborating with other businesses or potentially as a group um, within a destination to create a video that would either promote your town as a destination or an experience that your property in particular offers. So if you tend to have a lot of people that are into fly fishing stay, then perhaps do a fly fishing video and collaborate with the fly fishing company and a fishing shop in town and a guide and everyone can split it and each can use it for their own marketing. I think that that's one of the, it's a really positive thing. In terms of accommodation, one of the things I really do believe is that obviously it's about promoting your area, your local area, your destination much more than it is about promoting your, uh, your property. And I think that in that way, people don't go to a destination to stay at a hotel, they go to a destination to see the things that are there. 
And I think in terms of that cooperative destination sponsored kind of idea that you just talked about, if if your destination or local town doesn't have a video, it may be something that you could all look at together and shipping into because mm -hmm. yeah, I think that it's really important and then, then everyone makes use of it on their own websites. Sure, yeah, sure. So we're just going to run through some best practices. I know you've covered a few of them um, already, so, so we can glide through them fairly quickly. But as you said, keep it short and keep it and to the point. Um, the average viewing time across all video on the web is two, minute, two minutes and four seconds. James, does that include watching like people who watch um, on demand, like TV shows and all of that as well? This is... Uh... I believe that this was uh, this is talking about uh, this was taken off YouTube Vimeo mm -hmm. and so that's not looking at uh, yeah sorry oh, that's no. talking about okay. video rather than television programming sorry okay okay yeah just yeah I was just trying to clarify that great but that's uh, so one of the things that we years have gone by two minutes on commercially orientated so that was our target the ninety the ninety seconds or less. The other best practices, James, if you want to go through these, I would, I would love it if you could just kind of add your spin on it. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I think that we've already talked about that. It's about telling a story and adding personality. Let's make sure you get the real personality behind your business about, in lots of cases from an accommodation provider's perspective, you as the host are very central to the personality of the business. And it's really important that you get that personality over because what differentiates your property in lots of ways is about that personality, is about the little things that you do differently within your property. It's not necessarily about bedrooms that can look very similar and so on. It's about all those different points. And that's what I'd say is that rather than 360 style pans of bedrooms, let's do a little bit of it. You've obviously got to show some of the bedrooms, but show some of the specific things that you do that are really nice and different and really make you stand out. I think that that's one of the other things is what, what they want to know, what people want to know is what's new and exciting, what is there to do. So I'd always recommend putting a little bit of a, a little vignette, a little pop of some of the things that are close to your accommodation within your video where possible, just so that it does add, add, add to what's available and what they're, what they're viewing and what they can experience. I think that when you then move on to about, move from that into selling your business, you really need to think about who your customers are and with anything in terms of marketing and promotion. And if you don't know who your customers are, or if you're doing something that you think looks good and suits you, if that isn't what suits your customers, then what you need to think, you need to step into the shoes of your customers and really decide what it is that you think that your customers are looking for and make sure that that's what's being sold. Mm -hmm. But then and on I that point, the, last, sorry, the converse side of that is, yeah, you go ahead. Sorry, yes, yeah, that uh, subtle branding, it's not, not being explicit. I think one of the things that I, I look at is in terms, other people will debate this and put maybe not, not agree, but I look and when I see huge amounts of logos and lots and lots of, uh, lots of web domains and phone numbers and so on on the end of a video, I look and go, if I'm someone that's online, I'm not necessarily going to pause the video to phone. If people want to discover more about you, they've then got your name, they know who you are, and in lots of ways they can find you. And most people will search after watching video, and I think that that's where I wouldn't be, I, I really discourage using web domains and phone numbers on videos. I think it's about showing and promoting what you do without it uh, screaming your brand. It's got to be uh, subtly promoting your brand in a you know in a really nice way and I think that the other one is that if you are having refurbishments changes of uniforms ref, uh, new team members if the property has been sold and the main host is different or so on then obviously you need to keep these videos fresh and up to date and that's also in terms of best practices when choosing a video provider I'd also be very careful in asking uh, how much it will cost if you want small changes to your video rather than a whole new video. So in some ways, a, a new team member or a refurbished room adding in to your video mm. should be a very cheap thing to do if you're in a if you're in a quite centralised place. It shouldn't necessarily mean a, having a whole new video made. Interesting. 
I took a, a, a kind of a different turn on this. So once we've got the videos made, now what do we do? What are the best practices for making sure that the, not only was the video made and that it potentially can work, but that we know how well it's working and that it um, is delivering? So, so this kind of links in with some of the other um, eAcademy presentations that uh, Jason's has done. The first one is about SEO. And we discussed this a little bit earlier, but if you've made a video and you've invested this time and you've created this great product with all these best practices that James has, has outlined, when you go to deliver it, it's important that you follow through so that you know that it was worth it or whether it, it was the right video so that in the future you've got the information you need to either edit or make future ones and decide whether that is the right investment for you. So firstly, optimize for SEO. Um, when you upload your video, you can put target keywords in the file name and some of the video hosting services like YouTube will keep that. Others will override it, but they give you an opportunity to put a title of the video in as you upload it. You also can put in a description about that video so that when people are searching and they might say video hotels in Dunedin, um, in your description if you've included keywords like Dunedin Hotel, then your video is more likely to come up. Um, Another thing that can be helpful, like James said, you don't need to have the logos in the video. You don't need to have contact information necessarily within the video itself. But if the video is being posted on a profile page of any kind of a video hosting site or if it's on something like TripAdvisor or Jason's, then make sure that somewhere on that page there's a way for those people to get a hold of you. Whether they link through to your website, whether they can book right there, whether they can make a phone call. Include a link, include a phone number, include anything like that in your description. And uh, it just makes it that much easier for them to get through and find you. The other uh, thing is to track your results. So on sites like YouTube, this, this has to do with the, um, the first eAcademy that we did, which was the Measuring Your Marketing ROI um, eAcademy. And if you haven't seen that, then you can always go back. Uh, the links on this slide uh, actually work, so we'll send these out after the webinar, and, and you can go back and track back to those and watch the recordings of these. But measuring your um, results. So on sites like YouTube, you can actually put a trackable URL, and um, that's explained in Academy One, that actually tells your Google Analytics somebody went from that page on Google, I mean, I'm sorry, on YouTube, to your website. So um, if you put that link with the trackable URL in your description, someone watches your video, they say, that was great, let me try check this link. They click your link, they go through to your website, and your website, Google Analytics can say, this many people came from your YouTube page to your website. So that way you know that your website, your video is delivering from outside places. Um, on your own website, you can, it's not as clean for tracking, but um, you can note the, that when your video was added, and then just watch your engagement metrics over time, like James was talking about. So after you watch your after you put a video in, if you see that time on your site starts to increase, and you know the date that it was added, then you know that that video is working to increase engagement for you. So it's worth just kind of keeping a monitor on those things, um, and under and it helps you understand how worth it your investment was over time. That's one of the things that we're really, really careful on doing is what we do is we've, uh, we, we really try and take that information from people from the start prior to the video going online because I think that it is when you've made an investment, you really do need to make sure that it's paying off for you and to know whether if it, if it was a good investment, well, maybe it's something you need to do more of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. So how to choose a provider. If you've never done something before, sometimes it can be uh, quite overwhelming trying to figure out what questions you should be asking and what, what the expectations are. So we thought we'd put together a few slides that would help walk you through understanding what the questions are to ask and, and where generally price ranges and expectations should be when you speak to a video. And this is a really interesting point because I look back now five, six or seven months and back to St. Clair and that was what where I was at in my head when we were deciding what we were going to do with destination content I was going through all these going well how do we make what we do as easy as possible so I went back to that time in my head and here are some of the things that I think that you need to be really really careful with and make sure that you're looking at when choosing a provider so what's included in your price and lots of video companies will charge you extra for travel expenses and uh, so be, re uh, be very, very clear in terms of 
what's included? Do you, is, do you have to put up accommodation? Does that accommodation that you're putting up discount the level of your video or so on and so forth? And the other one is, what if it rains or if it's bad weather? And uh, it's obviously a really important, important part, particularly if uh, for properties that have got large amounts of outside areas that will need f filming. Is, mm. is it an easy thing to reschedule? Are you going, uh, is it going to be about getting the best footage on the day? Just kind of ask the question and make sure it's there. One of the other points that we've talked about is what are you licensed to use the video for? And one of the things that I think when it comes to photography and video work and so on, it was actually something that shocked me to begin with upon arriving in New Zealand in terms of licensing is that I certainly got stung at St. Clair Beach Resort a couple of times with photographers, but after a year, for me to be able to utilize the videos within my own website, sorry, photos on my own website, or in magazines and so on and so forth, is that I was being charged a yearly license fee on photos that I'd already paid to be shot, and it's actually very common in New Zealand in terms of who owns the property, in most cases video or photog videographers, photographers, video companies will retain the rights, so will own the footage, and you'll be licensed to use the video. So it's about making sure that the length that you're licensed to use that video, one of the things that we've done in that case is really made sure that it's, uh, it's an eternal, eternal license. So if you buy a video from Destination Content, it means that you own the, you own the license to be able to use that video as much as you want. Hmm. And I suppose in terms of that additional license fees, you really need to be kind of careful as to it's not just time restrictive. Some some licenses will also restrict where you can utilize, use the video. Hmm. And I think that in terms of video, it's about trying to make sure you use it in as many places as possible. So whilst today we've talked about the web, if you have got the opportunity to put it on a TV in your reception area and so on, well, that's really great to be able to utilize that space again. So and that, that same footage. Cool. In terms of so the, the last time you had here was, yeah, what was the time frame? So this one has to do with um, when they get into production, what is the timeline that it's going to take from the time that you guys get contracted for it to be delivered? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I think that it's particularly in terms of quite often people will come and shoot the video very quickly, but I think a lot of, uh, if you're not involved within uh, creative services or video production, sometimes you don't realize how much work afterwards there is to do, uh, and I think that it's just really important to have a very clear timeline set out as to when you can expect your finished video, because uh, otherwise you don't want to be chasing up months and months down the line looking for your completed video. And I think that the last point we've got there on this slide is how, how you make sure that you've got the right shots, and I think that what looks great, what you think looks best in your property may not always be the thing that will end up looking best on video. And also the other way is what a videographer or creative person thinks will look good may not always sell your property. So it's really important that there's a negotiation in terms of making sure that you're still getting what you think looks best in your property, but you're also taking on board the thoughts and the creative uh, experience person that's shooting the video to make sure they get the best results. Yeah. So I'm really finally, we're kind of running out of time now. Yeah, we're totally <laughs> out. So finally, the, the biggest thing here is once you have your video, guys, if you've put if you put the time into it and you put the money into it, make sure you get it seen. Uh, one of the things that uh, we run into a lot doing what I'm doing, um, consulting for tourism marketing, and James, I'm sure you're hearing this as well, is people get their video and it, it just doesn't end up anywhere. It goes on the website and then it dies. So, um, you know, make sure that instead of only putting it on your website, you put it in all those places that we talked about earlier in your marketing. And there's, some list, there's a list here that you'll be able to pick up on the uh, myjasons.com website uh, after the event that you can use as a reference. That's great. And again, if anyone's got any questions, they can obviously have, I'll come through to you guys at Jason's or uh, feel free to flick me an email and we'll be happy to help with any of that stuff. Sure. And in terms okay. of, I suppose, really, that's great. Well, Lynn, did you want to close us out here? Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you both for joining us today and for helping us through this e-academy. Um, a feedback survey will be on the way for everybody else. And um, you're able to get a white, a white paper about this 
on myjasons.co.nz. Um, any questions or advice, please contact our help desk at jasons.com or alternatively speak to one of your Jasons account, account reps. Thanks for attending so, today. Yep, and sorry that we haven't had time to answer any questions. If anyone has any questions, we will note them down and um, we will make sure to get in touch with you after the webinar and uh, are happy to answer those questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. Thank you. Great, and I'll be ending the webinar for everybody this afternoon. So I'm going to count you out now. Four, three, two, one. Have a great day.